loud expletive. Young lady, what did I tell you about that kind of language? That is not bleeping cool, mom. That's it, I've had it. I am so sick of you and your constant expletives and I don't know where this attitude is coming from, but it's gone on long enough. Now go wash your mouth out with soap right now. Joke's on you, we don't have any soap for some reason. Fine, here, eat this, it's the same thing. What? Hey guys, welcome back to The Stimulus. I'm Steph Evs, and let's talk about some weird science. I was recently working late one night trying to get ready for launch base with the Planet Flight software team, and we decided to order pizza. As we looked through the menu trying to figure out what everyone wanted or didn't like, one of the flight software engineers said, please, no cilantro. Now, being a cilantro aficionado like I am, I immediately came to the defense of one of my favorite green things asking, well, why? She replied that it tastes like soap to her, and it got me thinking, why does cilantro taste like soap to some people? Now, this wasn't the first time I've heard of it, and it may not be the first time you have either. In fact, anywhere from four to 14% of the population is afflicted with this cilantro phobia. But what exactly causes it? Turns out you can blame your genes for your cilantro hating. The people that taste soap when they chew on cilantro share a group of olfactory receptor genes called OR6A2. This particular group of genes is particularly sensitive to modified fragments of fat molecules called aldehyde. Aldehydes are particularly prevalent in cilantro aroma and, you guessed it, soap. You did get soap, right? It's, it's soap. So, since soaps are made of fragmenting fat molecules with strongly alkaline lye, they create these aldehydes. But cilantro isn't the only thing found in nature that uses aldehydes. Some types of bugs make aldehyde-rich, pungent body fluids to either attract certain creatures or deter them from messing with them. So why do some of us have these genes and some of us don't? Well, according to neuroscientist Dr. Jay Gottfried, the split probably is a result of our dependence on smell and taste to survive from our more primal days and the brain's drive to update its database of experiences. Basically we and other animals rely on smell and taste to keep us alive. For example, you know not to drink milk if it smells sour or to eat anything out of your fridge that has that special kind of funk to it. We also use smell to find mates and avoid predators that can kill us based on previous human experiences that have taught us, hey, don't do that thing, or don't eat that, it will kill you. When we taste something for the first time, our brain tries to identify it from past experience in order to figure out what it is and to determine if it's okay or not to eat. If you haven't tasted cilantro before, but have used soap that has that aldehyde smell, your brain may identify it that way and essentially yell at you to spit it out now. According to Dr. Gottfried, a former cilantrophobe himself, you may be able to cure yourself of the soapy taste by continuing to eat cilantro. Eventually, your brain may recalibrate and wise up to the fact that this plant won't kill you, and the flavor profile may adjust to something more enjoyable. There also may be a way around the aldehydes. According to one Japanese study, if you crush cilantro leaves, you may give the leaf enzymes a chance to gradually convert the aldehydes into other less pungent substances, making the cilantro leaves taste less offensive to the people that taste that soap-like flavor profile. So that brings us to our question of the day. Where do you fall on the cilantro eating spectrum? Do you like it or is it the same as washing your mouth out with soap? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you wanna learn more about this cilantrophobia and what causes it, I will leave links to my sources down below along with links to all of my social media and my Patreon page. So feel free to check that out in your free time. If you've got any more suggestions for weird science topics for me to cover, please tweet them at me at, at the stimulus using the hashtag weird science or leave them as a comment on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash the stimulus. Also just wanted to give a quick shout out to Mr. Evans's science class at Mascuda High School and the classes over at Sherwood Elementary School that might be watching right now. Thank you guys so much for tuning in week after week. You are the reason I do this so thank you for watching. But with that I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay well, stay awesome, and I will see you next time.